Let's go into my room. Anis Garik suffered horrendously during the civil war in Sierra Leone. Ten years on, she still struggles with the horrific memories. When they attacked, they attacked us in our village. They tortured me too much. They treat us bad. Even my daughter, they treat, him, they treat her bad. Badly. They, oh, they, they did not do... They did not do... They did not do anything good to us. My husband, they killed him right, right in presence of me and my mother. Both her husband and mother were killed. She and her daughter captured and raped fled to neighboring Senegal. There are others like Anis here in Senegal. Barry is from Mauritania, where he says his teeth were extracted one by one by security agents. Fleeing war and repressive conditions from different parts of Africa, victims of torture come to the African Center for the Prevention and Resolution of Conflicts in search of peace of mind and to heal their psychological and physical scars. At the center, the victims using the broken telephone game are urged to speak up for themselves to avoid having their stories distorted. Here, they are encouraged to open up and confront their past. Dr. Diop Bamba, who heads the rehabilitation center, reinforces this need. I think that it is very important to, to, to say, to give our message where we have to give our message. If the center has helped more than 1,000 victims drawn from 17 countries across the African continent. Ce sont des personnes qui ont vécu des maltraitances ou des différentes formes de torture qu'on peut catégoriser en trois types. C'est d'abord les, les tortures physiques. Ça part du passage à tabac, donc euh, du tabassage ou de la bastonnade systématique. Cette bastonnade pouvant être faite par des armes, de, de, par les armes, par des, des, des bâtons, par des fils électriques, etc. Euh, ça part des tortures électriques, euh, par euh, le passage du courant électrique. Ça part aussi par les tortures par armes blanches, par des blessures par armes blanches. On reçoit beaucoup de personnes qui ont été blessées par des baïonnettes et toujours dans des situations qui ont été faites par des groupes armés et dans une perspective soit de leur faire changer de position, soit de leur recueillir des informations. Donc des situations qui entrent en droite ligne avec les actes de torture. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Nave Pile, recently visited the center where she met with some of the torture victims undergoing rehabilitation. Where I was now born blind, you see, all these things are the rebels. You see my nose, that rebel beat me in my ears, they broke my foot, took my car, post press into my eyes. I was now born blind. My impression of, the, of this centre is that they're making a real difference in the lives of victims of torture, refugees and asylum seekers. I heard directly from them today when each one of them said that they wouldn't have had, they had no help anywhere until they came to this centre. She emphasised that the United Nations condemns all forms of torture. No form of uh, torture is permissible. Torture is uh, absolutely prohibited. Barry receives relaxation exercises, which are part of the psychological therapy. The center is funded by the United Nations Voluntary Fund for victims of torture and helps victims like Barry and Anis get back on their feet by giving them medical, legal and financial aid. They put my children in school, they help me, they give me projects, send can't me. When they give me, I started to do business, small, small business. Then I started to go to Mauritania to go and buy markets there. With systematic treatment and social support, victims like Anis are able to regain their confidence. But experts express concern that despite the prohibition of torture, it continues unabated.